Okay, here are solutions to quiz six for math 211. On this first problem, we're supposed to calculate these four things mentally. No calculator or written algorithms allowed, but explain your process. So the idea here is 49 times 800 is hard to do, but 50 times 800 isn't as bad because five times eight is 40. So 50 times 800 would be that 40 with three more zeros tacked on. In other words, 40,000. But that's not what it's asking. It's not asking for 40, 50 times 800. It's asking for 49 times 800. Well, 49 times 800 is one less group of 800. So I have this 40,000, and then I have to get rid of 800. So instead of 40,000, I have 39,200. Um, and where that comes from is 50 times 800 is equal to 40,000. And 40,000 minus 800 is equal to 39,200. Fine. Uh, this problem here, man, I don't know what 79 times 49 is, much less what 39 times 79 is. And I certainly can't subtract those two numbers. I don't know what they are. True, but you can get kind of clever and use the distributive property. Really, I guess you're using the commutative property to write the 79 times 39 here, switch the order and then the distributive property. The distributive property tells you that this is equal to 79 times whatever 49 minus 39 is. Well, 49 minus 39 is just 10, and 79 times 10 would be 790. And so logic here is this is the distributive property. The distributive says this is equal to 79 times 49 minus 39, which is 79 times 10. Uh, what about this one here, 225 times 12? A few different ways you can do that. The easiest, I think, is this double it, half it idea. If you double this number, you get 450. And if you half this, you get six. And maybe 450 times six is easier to do. No, nah, still hard? Okay, double it again. 450 doubled is 900. Six cut in half is three. 900 times three? Sure, I can do that. That's 2,700. And so what I would do here is say uh, this 225 times 12 is the same as 450 times 6, which is the same as 900 times 3. It's the double it, half it idea that we learned in class. It's a hard one. Uh, this one here, you're just careful with order of operations. Um, so that's that whole PEMDAS thing, although PEMDAS is kind of misleading. Uh, you really do parentheses first, then exponents, and multiplication and division tie. There's no precedence there. So to break ties, you go left to right. So you're staring at this thing looking for multiplication and division. You got one here and you got one here. You don't do the multiplication first. You actually do the division first because you're going left to right. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So this entire thing right here is equal to 4. And now you're looking at addition and subtraction because that's all you have left. Um, and again, you don't do addition before subtraction, you go left to right. So 25 minus 5 is 20, plus the 4 that we decided this was all equal to would be equal to 24. And my logic is this is equal to 25 minus 5 plus, um, how should I write this? I guess I can just write plus 2 times 2. So I took this 10 divided by 5 and made it a 2. And that's equal to 25 minus 5 plus 4. And that's equal to 20 plus 4. Uh, determine the following using the algorithm specified. So multiply these numbers together using the lattice method. For the lattice method, I'll take one of the numbers and write them horizontally. And the other number, write it vertically. And that's going to give you this little grid here. And you're going to fill in these grid, this grid by multiplying these numbers. Um, but if you get a two-digit number, you're going to write it really carefully. You'll write it one of the digits, the tens digit, above this line, and the ones digit below this line. So I'm going to kind of put these diagonals in, and I'm going to fill in my grid. So 3 times 1 is just 3, which I could write as 0, 3. 6 times 1 is 6, which I could write as 0, 6. 2 times 1 is 2, 0, 2. 5 times 3 is 15, so I'll write the 1 there and the 5 there. 5 times 6 is 30, 3 there, 0 there, 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12, 
2 times 2 is 4. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add along the diagonals. So uh, adding along this diagonal, I just get 6. On this one, I got the 5 plus the 0 plus the 2, which gives me 7. On this one, 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4. Let's see, that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, 3 and 6, and a bunch of zeros gives you 9. 3, hey, how convenient. You didn't have to carry anything. That wasn't on purpose that nothing carried. Uh, I just worked out that way, so fine. Uh, so what I get for my answer is 39,976 using that method. 263 minus 179 using the nines complement method. Okay, this is kind of an odd method. Yeah, I take this 263 minus 179, and I change it into a different problem. I leave the 263 alone, but I change it to addition. And so instead of subtracting 179, I'm going to add 820. Where did that 820 come from? Well, 8 is the 9's complement of 1, 2 is the 9's complement of 7, and 0 is the 9's complement of 9. Now I'm going to add these numbers up. 3 plus 0 is 3, 6 plus 2 is 8, 2 plus 8 is 10. And now I'm going to take this 1 right here and add it to this 3 right here. So what I'd have left would be 0, 8, 4. In other words, 84. Uh, and then do this division problem using the scaffold method. Hopefully I chose this to work out with no remainder. I think I did. Uh, but let's see. So you got 1356 divided by 13,832. So the idea with the scaffold method is you're just trying to take out chunks of 56. So how many 56s are there in this number? Well, I don't know, but there's certainly at least a thousand of them. Nope, that's not true. There's at least a hundred of them. How do I know there's a hundred? Well, a hundred times 56 would be five, six, zero, zero. So I could take out a hundred of them, I'd be taking out this number. And if I subtract, I'll still have more to do. 13 minus five is eight. Um, so I stare at this, and I'm like, hey, I could take out another 100. You might have chosen to take out 200 in the first step if you could have told, tell, if you could tell that 56 times 200 is a number smaller than this, then great, more power to you. But you don't have to. The scaffold method leaves you with some freedom in terms of how you do these problems. So now if I subtract, I got 12 minus 6 is 6, and 7 minus 5 is 2, so I'm at this number here. And then you ask yourself, okay, how many, what's some round number I can take out a bunch of 56s. Well, I don't know what number you would choose. Um, you might choose five, uh, or really 50, I guess. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to suppose that you saw that. I'm going to put in 40. And the reason I'm going to take 40 is four times 56. Uh, four times 50 is 200 or so. And the extra zero will give me roughly 2,000. So 40 feels safe enough. I bet 40 times 56 is smaller than the 2632. Let's see if it is. Uh, I'd have these, this zero, and then four times six is 24. You could carry the two, four times five is 22. So I get here. Now I subtract, and I have 392 left to go. Uh, maybe I need to move this over somewhere. So I got 392 left, and I'm trying to figure out groups of 56 I can put in there. Um, I could not get another 10. Yeah, how about that? Uh, I could not get another 10, so it's a good thing I didn't put 50 here. I would have been wrong. Uh, so what could I do? Well, I've already figured out that 40 times 56 is this number. So maybe I take advantage of that and say, well, then 4 times 56 would be 224. Uh, if I subtract, 12 minus 4 is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. I have 168 left. So I could have taken out a bigger number than 4, but I just chose to pick on a number that I've already used a few times. Uh, 168. I wonder how many 56s can go in there. Well, it turns out exactly three of them go in there. Um, that's because 3 times 50 is 150, and 3 times 6 is the remaining 18. At any rate, through a process that may or may not look like this because you have freedom in terms of the size you sizes of chunks you take out, you get that the answer is 247. Uh, so I think I'm going to call that good and end the quiz here.